Hello, good evening everyone. This is Devesh here and yes, it has been quite a journey being a male classical dancer and at the age of 14 when you tell your parents that you're going to be a choreographer, that is 22 years back, the first thing that they say, what is choreographer? Because they were not sure. And then you tell them that, you know, I want to become a dancer and I want to make my career in dance and then thousands of questions come from all the directions your family members, you know, your immediate family members, your relatives, everybody starts questioning, then how will you earn? What will you eat? So then I say, okay, I will just eat once a day, but I want to do this. And this is, and then when you come from a Sindhi family, where everybody is into business and they have restaurants and they are settled abroad, then they start laughing at you. So I started my career at the age of 14. My, actually, I was more into academics, but my mother told me that, you know, she, she saw in me, she, she saw the flair of dance in me and she got me enrolled into Shamakdavar classes because I think everybody has to join Shamakdavar classes that time, all the kids. It was fashion. And that's how it started. I was noticed there. I started teaching later after a year and I got many opportunities. I came across a lot of people who would hire me for Sangeets, for competitions, and that's how it all started. Then, of course, the question came, okay, chalo, ye to, it's a good pocket money for you, but what about earning like properly? What about finishing your studies and then taking up a job? So at the age of 18, I walk into a call center for an interview with a friend because she wanted a job and I went to support her. And unfortunately, I get the job and she doesn't. <laughs> and it's terrible, so I don't know what to do now. How? It's, it's ridiculous. She said, come along with me and you also just carry your CV and let's just walk in and give an interview and then she doesn't get through, I get through. And that's how I start working in a call center at the age of 18. After nine months, I realized that this is not what I want to do. I don't want to be in a corporate world. I don't want to sit in front of the computer, answer people's calls and solve their problems. So then I decide to leave and they don't let me go for two months. I have this retention period going on that you can't go, you are a potential candidate, blah, blah, blah. I leave, I go to, I go and audition at Terence Lewis Academy. And that's where I get selected for a three-year scholarship. And then we are a batch of 22 people where most of my batchmates are more popular. You see them on TV judging shows. And uh, yes, so I learned my contemporary dance over there. Then I decide to leave Terence Lewis's company because I don't want to be a company member. I just don't want to be a shadow of Terence Lewis. I want to move out. I want to explore. I want to do more in dancing. I don't want to be restricted to contemporary and jazz. So I step out and I discover Kathak. I joined Kathak class. When I went into a Kathak class, there were no boys there. There were, I think, 110 girls, out of which there were 50, 60 small girls, and I was dancing with them, learning ta thai thai tad, ta thai thai tad, which was a little embarrassing for me because I'm the only boy, first of all, and I'm, all, I'm with the kids learning. Of course, a lot of friends made fun of me and they said, you know, Kathak, it's not for boys. You know, you're a jazz dancer. You're so good in jazz, ballet, contemporary. And now what is this Kathak? It's for women. Or probably it's for gay boys. So are you one of those? And that's how I said no. And the best part is, uh, when I went to learn Kathak, my celebrity friend, she wanted to learn Kathak. Again, the same story. She dragged me. She said, you know what, Devish? Kathak seek they are, you know. We have to learn classical and your lines are so good and Kathak will be the best for you also. So, because she wants company early morning and I'm not a morning person. I'm not going to wake up at 6 o'clock and be in the Kathak class at 7. So, she dragged me. We went to the Kathak class. We learned there for three months. She stopped doing Kathak. I'm here after 14 years, still dancing Kathak. <laughs> then uh, I learned my basics for five years and then I met the god of dance once. I went for his workshop. When you go for his workshop, you have to audition and they give you a batch. 
they don't it's not that you won't get selected you will be put into a batch whether you're going to be in a beginners level or elementary or advanced so i went and auditioned at pandit birju maharaj's workshop in mumbai and when i saw him i was totally mesmerized it's like looking at lord nataraj in front of you i auditioned there i was put into my teacher's batch so <laughs> my teacher she she was furious how can you be in my batch and so that was the thing you know you audition and you go into the top, the highest level batch and i was i think that five days workshop i didn't even speak anything i just i was looking at maharaj ji i was observing him on the last day when we had a group picture i was sitting next to him and he told me why don't you come to kala ashram you have so much of talent come to delhi and learn i was totally like gob smacked i didn't know what to do i was just looking at him like an idiot he thought maybe i can't talk that was the dumbest thing just staring at him and not even saying yes no nothing no expression that's how it started so when i met maharaj ji that's when the whole scenario of kathak changed for me till then kathak was okay chalo kuch hum naya dance form seekh rahe but the nuances the detailing of kathak the bendings of lakhno gharana was something that was that grabbed my attention and that's why till today i am doing lakhnau gharana and doing kathak it's only because of maharaj ji you know just being next to maharaj ji ob- obviously he is no more but just being next to him to observe him so closely to learn from him i think it was a great honor and i was lucky that the last 5 years before he passed away 5 to 6 years i took training from him through workshops and i feel very lucky there's lot that i learned from maharaj ji lakhnau gharana now you ask now you must be wondering what is what are these gharanas so in kathak we have three gharanas so we have jaipur lakhnau and banaras jaipur gharana is you know when kathak started because kathak is a temple dance it started in the temples so people used to dance for god but of course when uh, india was captured and when these performers were pulled from the temples like the moguls they pulled these women from temples to dance in the courts so that's how the lucknow gharana started developing for jaipur of course they used to dance for all these rajputs and jaipur gharana is got more of laikari which even lucknow gharana has but it's more straight it's very sharp whereas lucknow is got more bending in jaipur if i do a dha dha it's like this but lucknow they will go dha you see the difference the nazakat of lucknow it's this if you have to do 1 2 3 4 that would be lucknow a jaipur would be 1 2 3 4 <laughs> <laughs> so as a male classical dancer you should be able to do both the ang you should know what's last year you should know what's tandav dance is a collaboration of both it's it's a mixture of lasya and tandav so if you are playing the role of shiva okay you should know how to be parvati so if you are going to be shiva you should know how to become parvati also kathak is what it's katha it's telling story if if i'm if i'm doing if i'm playing a role of if i'm playing radha i'm telling you what she feels for krishna if i'm playing krishna so it's my expression i should be able to play both the parts we we anyways have both within us we have krishna and radha within us so there's nothing wrong in that it's not that if you're a male classical dancer and if you play the role of radha that means you're going to become feminine or if you're a girl there are many girls who play the role of krishna so that doesn't mean they are going to become masculine it's their body language krishna would stand like this krishna would stand never stand like this and look this is krishna okay radha would be admiring herself krishna would be admiring radha so that is how it is maharaj is no more but then i decided whatever i have learned from him i will take that further 
all over the world and I will teach it to people. That's how my international workshops, they started. I started traveling to many countries. I started judging many international workshops, international festivals. I was invited by embassies uh, to take classes. All of this started, it was lovely. And then what comes? COVID. That means no travel, no work, sit at home. And then of course, online classes. So that was my journey. But the best thing that happened in this whole journey was at the age of 22, I got the most precious thing in my life. And that is a small baby girl. No, I'm not married now. Huh? Okay. So I adopted a beautiful child, one month old child who was unwanted and they wanted to discard her and so we decided to take her in and uh, I wanted her to be my daughter. I convinced my family, I convinced everybody. Of course, a lot of people told me there'll be a lot of social stigma if you're going to adopt a child. People are going to ask you many questions from where did you get this baby and all of that. I was ready to face all of that at the age of 22 and there was no option. The other option was to give the child to the orphanage or to keep her. One month old girl, child, I don't know, I don't trust any orphanage, I don't trust anybody. So we legally fought and there was no such case before, so they, even the law didn't know what to do. Of course they denied the baby to me because I was a single father. But my parents supported me and they adopted her. And today she's legally my sister and she's sitting here. So I will tell you a small Krishna Kavitta which is uh, composed by my current Guruji, uh, Pandit Devyang Vakilji. So it is a small Krishna Kavitta which is on YouTube, I will tell you a small Krishna Kavitta. So the second track will play that. This Krishna Kavitta is basically how it is. I will just uh, narrate four lines for you. सब सखियन संग कृष्ण कन्हैया जमुना के तट पर रास रचैया कर में मुरलिया पग पे जनिया नाच रहत है कथक तथैया बहुत प्यारा कविता बनाया है इसमें कथक के बहुत सारे बोल्स भी हैं तो अभी आप सुनेंगे वो उसको So Krishna and Radha ki masti, chhed chhad. Do you understand the last one? Ta teh teh teh, a teh teh teh, dhan dhan dha. Dupatta khinch rai na uska. Woh karti hai, ta teh teh teh, a teh teh teh, dhan dhan dha. Phir idea, ta teh teh teh, a teh teh, uska flute leke, she starts playing. Yeah, yeah. 